Jordan Peterson talks about effective parents mirror the world that their kids are going to enter. And I'm glad I heard that because there was a time for me where I was going through the divorce and still at home and I would always make a goal that I was never gonna walk in the house like stressed. I stopped omitting information from my kids. Intentionally, Intentionally. because of that quote. Yeah, and I let them know, I'm like, hey man, like sometimes me going out there, I get my trash kicked. Yeah. But I show up every day and mm -hmm. I keep trying to get better. And I believe that God gives us talents and it's our responsibility to multiply those talents. Welcome to the Premium Mindset, the weekly podcast where homegrown entrepreneurs and business owners, Evan Ritchie and Cameron Bodden share the good, the bad and the ugly of modern entrepreneurship and reveal what really happens behind the scenes of their personal and professional lives. As owners of two of America's fastest growing and most disruptive companies, Coconut Cleaning and Green Mango Pest Control. Stay tuned for real stories, struggles, insight and advice from real entrepreneurs in real time. I remember starting Coconut. And a few people with great intentions said, you can't do entrepreneurship and be present for your kids. I remember at the time being engaged, saying, watch me do both. And... They were right to a certain extent. And I think there's a lot of lies in entrepreneurship about sacrificing your whole life for a few years, sacrificing your family or your relationship. And there are truths and variables to every aspect of it. But I refuse to believe in the idea that you can't have it all. And so I look forward to this this conversation, because I think, I, I can't speak for you, but of all the titles I've ever held between uh, janitor, janitor, captain of a state championship baseball team, missionary, um, husband, uh, co-owner, CEO, COO, whatever the title is here at Green Mango, <laughs> My favorite title that I've ever held is father or dad. And I think, I think you feel the same. And so I look forward to talking about our experiences, attempting to balance the title of entrepreneur and father. Yeah, man. I, when, you know, when I think about the early times of green mango, when I didn't have kids Dang it. and what? What? Nothing. <laughs> um, you know, I got, let's see, I got, we started Green Mango in November. I got married in December. So Liz has been here pretty much from day one. And uh, it was fun to have her like come to the office late at night and help stuff the packets to help clean out the trucks to help get ready for the next day. And like, that was her, that was her way of like supporting me. And, and what's been cool is to realize, and it's only hit me this past year and a half as, you know, basically I, uh, you know, I bought dusty out of green mango that I've really kind of opened up to this. And this first year and this past year and a half is the first time where I've seen just kind of appreciation and the value for having a strong, support system and a strong wife behind yeah. me because I would always go home and let's be like, tell me about your day. And he's like, Oh, it's good. Knock some doors, you know, sprayed some houses, whatever. And I wouldn't really want to get into details because one, I just, I didn't want to relive that same day. Right. Like not just, not only just cause not cause it was horrible, but just because like I'm over it. Like I just want to chill. I don't want to think about work. And it was kind of unfair to her because she couldn't, she didn't really know what was going on, you know? But this past year and a half, um, like we would start going on these walks at night for 15, 20 minutes. And I would just, for whatever reason, mainly probably because I didn't have Dusty to bounce ideas off. And I had you, but it was just, I don't know, like for whatever reason, I started sharing with Liz of all the challenges, all the opportunities. 
And it was just refreshing to have that support system. But it wasn't until then where I really appreciated it. And I don't know, there's just, there's so much value. And so what I would share with entrepreneurs when we're talking about the wise before we get into kids and a balanced life and all that is I wouldn't make the same mistake that I made of not just like giving high level information, go home, talk about your problems. And one of my problems was, is that in order for her to give me good advice, I'd have to give her like almost 30 minutes to an hour of context of what was going on. And so because I didn't want to do that, when I'd ask her a question, she'd give me like advice that like, bless her heart, yeah. like she's doing her best, but I'm like, no, you don't get it. And you don't get it. Cause I didn't explain it, but I don't want to get into it. So like, let's just talk about right. something else. But the more you explain, um, you know, what's going on, the more that they can help. And I just encourage a lot of entrepreneurs. I think that, you know, it's, it's challenging enough, right. To go through starting a business and all the time that's away and, and that separation that you feel, if you share with them your pain points, what you're going through, like, I think it's going to help your marriage out a ton. Yeah. I think as you're, as you're talking, I reflect on a quote that uh, it's not even a quote. It's just more of a, a saying by Alex and Layla Hermosi, but they say, when you get married, you marry the person that they are. And where most people fail in the dating and engagement process is they, they don't really plan to marry that someone like the person who that, who they want to become. Yeah. And I feel like being married 11 years and then going through a divorce that who I was 11 years ago in terms of, Hey, my dad was an entrepreneur, but he chose a, such a, um, a smaller income so that he was always home with the family. Yeah. And I always knew that said he was always home when you got home from school, yeah, right? Always, always. Yeah. And every baseball game, even baseball practices, like as a high school student, not like I'm not talking about he dropped me off at T-ball and stayed. I'd be like high school and like I would just look up in the stands and he wouldn't be the yeller. He wouldn't talk. He wouldn't yeah. try to interact. He would just be up in the That's corner crazy. always. Huh. And so I always knew that that is what I wanted. But for whatever reason, throughout me growing up and having you know, kids fairly early that the things that I wanted to do with my kids and the experiences I wanted to have, it, I couldn't make 60 grand. I couldn't make 70 grand, a hundred grand. I, I needed more and it wasn't about working more as it was leveraging my time and how I made the money. And so I think a lie that I was under at the time uh, during my marriage was that kind of similar to you, it was too much to explain every little detail. But there was a part of me that hoped she would understand the stress, but it's really hard to understand the stress you if, don't know. <laughs> if you're not sharing the details. And so uh, my ex-wife was extremely patient, but we, we definitely grew apart in our ambitions. And my desired outcome was that the ambition would lead to more family time. And make no mistake, I never put work over my kids. I was the dad that anytime I could, uh, and if I had to work later, I would wake my kids up at nine. Like even if they were asleep for two hours, they were like, I want to be up. So I always joke that my, my daughter, when she became like, I'd say like four she was always, hey, wake me up. And we'd go to the gas station at like 10, 11 o'clock at night, come home, watch a movie. And my life was no different in terms of like my time with kids. Like they, or I'd come home. My from, wife would kill me if I waked up our kids at 10 o'clock. <laughs> I just, I improvised, right? I didn't, oh, they're asleep. I can't talk to them. It's like, yeah. I just went and w woke them up. And they'd tackle me, you know, hug me. We'd go to Greenfield Lakes at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night hit balls. We did all this stuff, but I definitely, when I think of the marriage aspect or even relationship aspect, my advice looking back is that you can't expect your partner to know what you're going through without giving them the context. Yeah. 
And I think when they have more context, you'll actually get the result that you want because they'll truly understand like, well, that's what I was going to say. Like you don't, you, you're not, you're marrying the person who they are today, not who they're going to become. And in our last podcast, you asked me the question, Hey, how does someone that's making a hundred grand get to a million dollars? I said, well, they have to want it. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to want it. So if only one person wants it, there's a decision, you know, whether it's subconsciously or not, you make that decision. Hey, I want that. Yeah. And if you're not talking with your spouse and making that decision together, that's where that separation can go. I didn't have that conversation. I just got lucky that list just supported yeah. me, you know, and for whatever reason, she, you know, it wasn't a problem. It's like, Hey, I, I understand what's going on here. Like, let's go. Yeah. Um, was your mom okay with your dad making that much money? I'm assuming yes, because yeah. they're still married and you know, yeah. but just imagine if she wasn't and he was making 50 grand a year and she's struggling to feed the kids or getting the baseball out, you know, gear and, and all that stuff like that causes resentment too. And that's the power of communicating with each other. That, that was the other side of the coin is that I, they didn't fight, but they stressed about money all the time, all the time. Yeah. And they stressed together, you know, well, like that's I, probably the difference. Yeah. They stressed together. But at the end of the day, I just remember growing up and, and hearing the collection calls come in and, and never went on a vacation or a trip, uh, you know, used my, my mom's car to go to school. Like there, all the, th all the first world, um, you know, problems, not real problems, yeah. but at the time in a 16 year old's mind, I don't have my own car. That's a problem. And so there was this part of me that wanted to satiate that true protection was financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And the other part of me was if I spend too much time away from my kids, they're going to get into drugs and, and it's going to be terrible. And while they're 10, nine, seven, and almost four, they still have a lot of life to live. But I just, I just can't believe regardless of how busy I am, that you can't give them 30 minutes, an hour, hour and a half of your day. And without that phone in your hands, that is like five hours to them. Almost gets to a point where they're like, okay, dad, like you're good. Go away. I love that. Well, the, com the communication part that we're, you know, encouraging yeah. for your spouse, what I'm starting to realize my little boy's 10, my little girl's seven is that communication now is needed with them. Yeah. So for example, like I just talk about, Hey, do you like all the private lessons that you're in? Do you like the vacations that we go on the house that we're in the clothes that you wear, all those things? Like, let me explain it to you. It's because I'm going to work. It's because I take phone calls, you know, early in the morning or late at night. It's because I'm doing this or I'm doing that. And you're helping them kind of understand. And I'm not saying like they grasp it or buy into it, but it's more like, okay, I need to let dad have some time here because of these other things. But a big part for me as, as an entrepreneur is that like I have my needs that I have to get done as well. But I also have time that I want to spend with them. So right now, especially like I made my goal this year to read for at least 15 minutes a day, right? Well, in the mornings, my kids love to play with me and I love to play with them. But, you know, selfishly, like I know if I want to advance as an entrepreneur, like I need to read a ton of books this year and educate myself on where I want to go. So our rule is that before 750, do like I need to do my thing. Right. But at 750 to 815, I'm like the phone's down. I'm with you guys. And lately it's been going out and jumping on the tramps because it's so nice. But 750 to 815, I'm on the tramps with them. And then, you know, I try and be home by five. It's not always that way. But 530, once again, put my phone down and be with them until bedtime. And what's great about having a supportive wife again is that sometimes I fall back into that because when there's fires at work, it's hard to put your phone down at five 30 when you're wanting to talk, when I'm wanting to talk with you and try and game plan for the next day or call that manager and talk to him about what happened and all those things. And what's cool is Liz will send me like, just kind of like generally just, Hey, by the way, I, it seems like you've been on your phone a lot lately. It's like, Oh yeah. You know, but putting it down, 
And that five, that hour with those kids with the phone down and having those like allotted times, it really makes all the difference. I love that. And I, I would encourage anyone in their uh, relationships. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be entrepreneurship. It could just be any dynamic where you have maybe a little more autonomy in your job to work a few more hours uh, where it's not, it's not about this isn't to the eight to fivers, but if you are working something where you can be flexible and you continue to choose more work, I promise you when more money comes, you won't make the choice to take back on the hours. Mm-hmm. I, I've just, I've, I've seldomly seen it. And, and so it, it does come to a point where you need to draw a boundary with yourself and say, am I working to work or am I working for what I said I was going to work for five years ago? And why is 200, 300,000, 400,000, why is this not okay? And you have to get back at communication with your spouse and partner. And then to your point about the communication with kids that, uh, with four kids, one-on-one time has been more important for me now than ever. And I've tried to find ways to pick off the kids and rather than go, you know, pick them all up and it's just kind of madness for a little bit. I'll say, Hey, I'm going to come pick up Ammon. I'm going to come pick up Mary and spend a few hours, even Stetson, he's three and a half, almost four and, um, isolated time and being intentional about the questions you're asking them and getting to know what's going on in their world means everything to them. Tone. <laughs> I was just thinking like, you know, Banks is becoming so self-aware lately that I'll come home and be like, what's wrong, dad? It looks like you've, I, you know, had a hard day. Like, have you experienced that? And what have you done to <laughs> help out with that? <laughs> Cause you're like, dang dude, I can't even hide it from my kid. You know? Cause you're, you're like, you put the phone down. It's like, okay, let's get into, let's get into playful dad mode, but you still can't get it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then your 10 year old's like, dude, you seem, you seem sad. What's up? It's like, man, that's what, that's what breaks me. Jordan Peterson talks about effective parents mirror the world that their kids are going to enter. And I'm glad I heard that sooner or sooner than later, because there was a time for me where I was going through the divorce and still at home. And I would always make a goal that I was never going to walk in the house like stressed. Mm -hmm. And if that was just driving another 10 more minutes or sitting in the car around the corner and just kind of like getting myself right. But, um, and and I know this could be heard wrong. It's not about, I just started to choose to come home stressed, but I stopped omitting information from my kids. Intentionally. Intentionally. Because of that quote. Yeah. And I let them know, I'm like, Hey man, like sometimes me going out there, I get my trash kicked. Yeah. But I show up every day and Mm -hmm. I keep trying to get better. And I believe that God gives us talents and it's our responsibility to multiply those talents. And my talent at this age, Ammon, or, you know, Mary or Rocky is, you know, dad's good at like understanding people in the business. And I try to make things go better for people. And the nature of that means that I take on a lot of people's stresses sometimes. And and, um, you know, sometimes I go out there and I have amazing days and I make amazing days. And then sometimes it gets the best of me. Have you ever had days like that at school? And yeah, dad, like, I feel like test days, like, I just want to come home and sleep. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like today was a test day for me. Yeah. And, and it's allowed me to deepen my relationship with the kids rather than just believe that they only want to play video games. And there's a time and a place, but um, another little, you know, tidbit to entrepreneurs and just any parent out there is that uh, your kids know what's going on and they, they read it. And I feel like the sooner that you can find a way to help them digest what the world is going to look like, they won't be some 18 year old that goes out and, uh, comes back home and they're like, what the heck was that? It's like, (laughs) no, it's stressful and it's hard sometimes, but you show up every day and you get better and you get more intentional and you, you get more gratitude and you start to see these little kids like, I'll come home. I don't know if Banks or Ivory ever does this, but I'll come home and like something I usually do, Ammon did. 
Like, hey, Dad, did you see I pull the weeds outside? Like, I noticed oh, that cool. when you come home, sometimes you pull no, the weeds. Thanks. hasn't done that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I, I've noticed that in a small way, my kids have tried to distribute the the weight in their own little mind. And, or, hey, I, I made you breakfast and it's like a toast with like a block of butter on it. I'm like, love it. thank Let's you, go. bud. <laughs> I love that. So share 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 with the kids and and try to help them find ways to digest what you're going through and help prepare them i was gonna say i think that'll if you just act like work is so fun every time and you're happy when you come home and you're happy when you're leaving i think that if you don't have to work for anything like you don't appreciate it yeah. and so if you talk about the challenges and you talk about the wins the losses all the things I think they value it more. And, yeah. and one of those moments for me was the other day when, when Tyler Hall and then we're doing the training and they asked like Banks was in the training and he said, what are you grateful for? Mm. And Banks raises his hand and he says, green mango. It's like, I love that man. Like he's grateful for green mango. And, and I can only, you know, speculate that it's a lot of, because he sees all the time that I put into it. He sees me come home in pain. Sometimes he sees me, talking to Liz about the wins, the struggles. And I think he senses that like, Hey, like this is hard and, and hard things are, are most of the time are rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think especially as it pertains to either starting a business, running a business is involve your kids as well. What I love is when your kids are here at work sometimes. And for me with the different dynamics that I was going through, um, I would have my kids at, at the office and it's, it's funny to me, like when my kids, like I'm talking to them or, and I have them and, and they say, Hey, how's Sherry, <laughs> you know, Hey, Hey, Sherry was asking for this. And did you get her that thing or Andrew and how's Cole? And, yeah. um, it's been, it's they been, don't ask about the cream angle people. No, I don't time. know why. I'm just um, <laughs> no, but they're all, they're always so, and then, and then what's cool is that in a small way, they start, you start talking to them at, about school and about their friends. And then they start making these weird connections. Like, well, dad, you know how you were telling me about, you know, you were going through it with this person. Like, that's what me and Zach are going through over Foursquare. Yeah. I'm like, rough, that's dude. <laughs> that's <laughs> rough. So smart. Yeah. They just make these weird connections in life and they, but Hey, instead of, you know, being mad when I lost, I, I just shook his hand. And I said, Cause you said you shook that one guy's hand. I'm like, well, some people I shake their hands, so but I don't, but the other, the last advice that I guess I'll, I'll give too is involve your kids in any type of work around the office that you can. Right. So any type of a service project that we're doing, we have the kids come and participate in it. Whenever I do the Friday games, like banks ask me every week, can I come with you on Friday to do the games? And like, he sees what I'm doing there and we're teaching them. And that, that's been a lot of fun too, like involving them as much as we can. Yeah. And, um, I would say for me, six and a half years into coconut, um, recently just got engaged to Kate and I'm not going to lie. I probably would have chalked 2023 as in my, like as my most difficult year. And, uh, my dad always reminded me of a quote that character is not meant to be created in times of trial. That's when it's intended to be used. And I'm grateful for my father and my mother for the 33 years of teaching and coaching and patience towards me because in 2023, I feel like everything that I was as a person with the help of many supported me through that difficult time. Yeah. And, and now I would say just last weekend was probably one of the most rewarding trips that I've ever had. I'm not familiar with skiing. Kate is. <laughs> and I, we went and got my kids and, and, um, yeah, it was, it was super neat for me to see her take these kids that aren't hers and treat them as if they were and watch them ski with her and watch her excitement for them going down a full hill. And 
in my mind and in that moment, I'm like, this is just what I've always wanted. I like, and I remember like texting you a picture of me skiing. I'm like, I, I want to come back and double down on all this. Cause this is all <laughs> I want. I want to do these moments. I want to create experiences. And then what's been great about trying to be a better father is that it's allowed me to interact with other parents here in the workplace and say like, Hey, what do you want? Like, what is it that you want? And if I'm being open and vulnerable to them, I say, I, I have to imagine like you got bills, like, yeah. And then you just, you finally will hit a point. Some it's usually generally around their kids. And it's like, I want my kid to have the life that, that I didn't have. Yeah. And, and I, I've been able to find that most people's why who are, whose intentions are to either start a family or they have a family is centered around their kids quality of life. And so starting a business um, and putting the business over your kids and family is never acceptable. And I would just, I do, I would do what you always do, which is question. And any parent that says like, I, I can't go to my kid's game. I can't do this. Like I know there's times and seasons and I've accepted I can't go to every game and do everything, but I would never rationalize that there's even a season of months that would go by where I couldn't justify being with my kids Saturdays, Sundays, nights, early mornings, whatever it might be. And just to remember that they're watching yeah, and they're going to, they're going to want to be like you hopefully. And I hope that everyone would work every day thinking of tomorrow and is what you're doing for your business and for your family going to be the best thing for tomorrow and the next day as well. And just don't forget those kids are always watching. I love that. I think, I think as an entrepreneur, it's your job to get creative, to allow you to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. Yeah. Right. Um, ever since I've been married to my family in my, with my in-laws for 13 years now, they always go to California for a week in the summer, yeah. at least a week. And as long as I can remember, like we've been going on those trips, but secretly I kind of love it every year. My, my mother-in-law, she's like, Hey, remember Cam, when you used to have to take the sales calls all day long. And so I just like walk up and down the boardwalk or like whatever from eight to eight to I think six o'clock. And I would just, cause I was the only salesman and I would take the phone calls, but my kids would see that. And I would let them know like, Hey, like this is the phase that I'm in in life. Like I need to be the salesman. I need to, to take all the sales calls, but before eight o'clock and after six, like I'm your guy and I'm still here in California with you. And that's what I would say to all the entrepreneurs out there that are like taking the calls right now is figure out a way to still show up for your kids, but also just know like it's just a season. Like it feels like it was yesterday, but really it's been, I don't know, eight, seven, eight years since I've been on the phones at, well, no, probably six years because yeah, we're 13, six. probably six years. And like, you're, it's just, a, it's just a season at a time. So keep pushing, keep getting through it talk to your kids, talk to your spouse, be on the same page and just keep working to get those ski trips, to get those fun. You know, now I get to go to California and we've talked about that of now I really don't, you know, just cause I love work, you know, I keep my phone on me, but sometimes I'll go the whole day and not even look at my phone. And that's the reward knowing that I have good people, you know, around me to help me out, facilitate when I'm gone. Yeah. And, you know, what a change that is from going from taking all the sales calls to not looking at my phone during the day. And like, that's a huge blessing. Yeah. So we asked the question or phrased the question, is it worth it? Absolutely. Especially when it's done right. And what's great is that even if you're in a position where you've made some mistakes or the dynamics of your family have changed, you still have today. You still can make a difference yeah. today and you have, you know, every minute moving forward to let your kids know that, you know, they are your world and um, you know, they're counting on it. <laughs>